In this video, we're going to look at the nth roots of unity, and we can express this as z to the n is equal to 1. We're going to start with a really straightforward case of z cubed is equal to 1 and find the cube roots of unity. The method of solving this uh, that we're going to use is actually a long way round, but hopefully will give you an understanding of the topic if we increase the value of n. So, for example, if we looked at z to the 6 and we wanted the 6 roots of unity. Generally, if we wanted to solve this, we'd subtract 1 from both sides. We would see that it's a difference of cubes and then factor it and solve it. If we were, to, if we were asked uh, about what the cube roots of 1 were a few years ago before we looked at um, any complex numbers, we would just say the answer is 1. The fundamental theorem of algebra, though, tells us that there are going to be two more. We can show these on an argon diagram. So let's, in fact, let's, uh, let's make that one. That color. We'll show them on an argon diagram and we're going to have the one real root and this one real root is one and that lies just here. Okay. The other two are equally spaced now around a unit circle of two pi radians and in terms of the argon diagram create complex conjugate pairs. So this distance here is one, this distance here is one and this distance here is one. If we look at these, we can say that these roots on an argon diagram would be Z1, they would be Z2, and they would be Z3. We might also see these being written as 1, omega, and then omega squared. The sum of these roots are now 1 plus omega plus omega squared, and that will all be equal to 0. And in general, when we've got Z to the n, 1 plus omega plus omega squared dot 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 plus omega to the n minus 1 will be equal to 0. We can show that by just looking at some vectors and if we think about these vectors if we take this one from 0 and we go out and then top to tail we put this one on we will come down here and then finally if we put this one on we will end up back at 0. Another interesting uh, part on these is that these two are conjugate pairs, so they're complex conjugate pairs. So we can say now, uh, on here, omega star, so the conjugate is equal to omega squared. The way in which we find the nth roots of unity varies hugely um, depending on which exam board you follow, which book you read. My preferred choice is the following. What we'll look at, and we'll start with, we'll find the six roots of unity. So my starting place is to say that z to the n is going to be equal to 1. And if we think about 1 just here, we can say that that's going to be equal now to e to the 2 pi k i. Now k is just an, an integer value. This is any multiple of 2 pi. So we know one solution at 1 has got any multiple of 2 pi. So let's say that we can write this as z to the n is going to be equal, and we know it's got a modulus of 1. So generally when we'd write r e to the i theta, r is just 1. So we can now write e to the 2 pi k i. Using the rules of indices, we can now write this as z is going to be equal to e to the 2 pi k i over n. And all we're doing is splitting a unit circle up and we're dividing that by n. And n is the number of roots of unity that we're looking for. So if I just sketch this up now, what I would be doing, I'm going to try and find the six roots of unity. So if I sketch this up, what I'm going to have is something that looks like the following. And this really will be a bit sketchy. We'll have something looking, in fact, let's make it a slightly less, more, slightly less sketchy. It's going to look something, give or take, like so. And what we'll find is the following. We'll have this one here, that one here, and these will all have a length of 1 and be equally spaced around a unit circle of 2 pi radians. So uh, are they looking about the same? And what we will say is the following. We will say that this one is going to be 1, this one is going to be now omega, this is going to be omega squared, this is going to be omega cubed, omega to the fourth, and then omega to the fifth. And these are equally spread around.
So what we can now say then is that if we have z to the power of 6, we can write that now. And our first one, taking this one here, we can write this as e to the 2 pi ki. In fact, let's move that over. Let's see if we can get that. Is that going to want to? Let's put it all over here. And this is one particular method. We're going to look at using um, De Moivre's theorem as well on this. But my approach is as follows. And we say now that z to the 6 is equal to 1, which is equal to e to the 2 pi ki, where k is a real number. Okay. And what we're going to do now is rewrite this as z will be equal to e to the 2 pi ki by now 6 which of course tidies to give us that our roots are going to be e to the pi ki over 3. Here is the next slight uh, discrepancy as such. Generally we take k from 0 to n minus 1 but this will give us values in the interval from 0 to uh, 2 pi. So what I'm going to do is take k equal to 0, and that's where I'm going to start. And that one will give me this one here. Then when we take k equal to 1, we will get omega. And omega generally is the first positive, uh, the smallest positive argument. If I now take k equal to 2, k equal to 3, k equal to 4, and k equal to 5, we will now use those to find those roots because these are evenly split across a 2 pi radian distance. The reason we don't use uh, 6 is because I'm going to get exactly back to where I started. If I sub in here 6, I'm going to get back where I started. So we go to n minus 1. A bit of a, an insight though, sometimes we measure from negative to positive pi. And in that case, we would take k equal to 0, k equal to plus or minus 1, k equal to plus or minus 2, and then k equal to 3. And we'll look at that as we go. So please bear in mind that you may see this being used to ensure that our answers are between uh, negative and positive pi. So let's start off then. And what I'll say then is z1, and we'll take this to be z1, okay? So we can say z1 is going to be equal, and we will sub in k. So z1 is going to be equal to e to the 0. Now e to the 0, we quite clearly know is 1. So when k is equal to 1, what we end up with is our first solution. And that right there is 1. Now if we take k equal to 2, what we're going to get is z2 or omega, just here. And what we'll have now is e... And if I sub in now uh, 1 here, so taking k equal to 1, we're going to have uh, pi by 3i. So we're going to have e to the pi by 3i. So if we think about that in Cartesian form, e to the pi by 3i will give us now this root here. And that's going to give me 1 half plus root 3 over 2i. And that will give me now, when k is equal to 2, that right there is omega. If we take our third root, z3, this is when k is going to be equal to, uh, on here, well, I've, my apologies, I've started uh, doing k equals uh, 0. That should uh, be k equals 1. Let's get shot of that. Um, we can now put this in. So let's take k equal to now, uh, what we can have, k is equal to 2. So k is equal to 2, we can get e to the 2 pi by 3i. And that's going to be this one right here. So what we're going to get then is minus 1 half. And then we're going to get plus root 3 over 2i. And that's where k is going to be equal to 2. If we now look at this one right here, this will give us an interesting result. Taking z4, uh, z4 or omega cubed, we can see we're going to have now, and we're going to sub in 3. This gives me e to the i pi, or pi i, and we know that this is an interesting result in maths, and that gives us minus 1. So e to the i pi is minus 1, and that is when k is equal to 3. If we now do z5, 
or omega 4, this one down here, what we're going to have, we will now sub in uh, when k is equal to 4. e to the 4 pi i by 3. And that is going to give us down here, we're going to have, what's that going to be? Minus 1 half, minus root 3 over 2i. And that's when k is equal to 4. If we now do the final one, what we're going to have is uh, now our final answer is z6 or omega to the fifth. And we're going to use on this one 5. So we have e to the 5 pi by 3 i is going to be equal. And remember, we're going to be just here. We're in essentially the fourth quadrant, which is going to give me positive 1 half. And then we're going to have now minus root 3 over 2 i. And that's when k is equal to 5. Now be aware that at this point right here, where we've gone for uh, k is 4 and 5, in general, if we were trying to get this between negative and positive pi, instead of 4 and 5, we would have had negative 1 and negative 2. And it's kind of it's it's important that you understand that because some different uh, different exam boards require different things. So let's now look at the, the conjugate pairs here. So let's grab these ones up. We know that this one right here is going to be a conjugate pair with this one right here. And that holds true. If we look at this one here, this now is where we've got z2 or omega to the first power. We've got 1 half plus root 3 over 2i. Now if we look at this one down here, our final one, we've got 1 half minus root 3 over 2i. If we now think about this one right here, where we've got w, uh, sorry, omega squared, where we've got omega squared and omega to the fourth, we can see now that I keep thinking I want to say w, omega. Um, let's put this down here. We can see that omega squared or z3, which is here, is going to be the complex conjugate of omega now to the fourth power. OK, and then we have our two real solutions and our two real solutions. One sits on the positive real axis and the other sits on the negative real axis. And you can see those are equally distributed across the two pi radians. So as stated, if you ask between zero and two pi, you would use that. At this stage, what we would do here is use K is equal to negative one and K is is equal to negative 2 instead of the form 5, which would give me now that Z5 uh, was equal to E. And subbing in, we're going to have minus, we're going to have E to the no, minus 2 pi by 3 I. And on this one, when K is going to be negative 2, what we're going to have then is, um, uh, sorry, when K, I've, um, I've done those the other way around. Um, that one's going to give us this one just here. And then what we're going to have now, and I'll switch this around, that's going to be Z6. We're going to have Z5. This is going to be E to the negative 2 pi by 3i. So this one right here will correspond to this one, just there. And then this one right here, uh, this one that I should have put as, you can see what I've done. Um, this one right here should be when we've got negative 1. So that's going to give me now negative, let's put that on, negative. Uh, in fact, I've screwed that completely, haven't I? Let me start on that one again. What we should have here, if we switch these to uh, negative and positive 1, feeding them in right here, this is going to be the negative pi by 3 i, and this is going to be the negative 2 pi by 3 i. Hopefully you've understood that for some reason. I wasn't able to do some basic maths. Uh, but there we go. That's when um, we've got now k is equal to minus 1. And then k is going to be equal to minus 2 instead. Um, and whilst it doesn't quite correspond with those, hopefully you can see where that's going. The alternative way that this is promoted is to use De Moivre's theorem. And if we again take now z cubed, we'll take z cubed as I'm sort of running out of time a little. If we take z cubed, we know that this is equal to 1. And we can write this as z cubed is going to be equal to 1 which is going to give us our principal argument of 0 plus 2 pi k plus i sine of 2 pi k. Remember, this value of k is just, um, just a value, a real value, and these are just multiples of 
of, uh, of uh, this root just here. So we can have any multiple of that. So using De Moivre's theorem, we can now write that z would be equal to cos of 2 pi k plus i sine of 2 pi k. And then we would have that, of course, to the third power as we're taking the cube roots. So now we could write z is equal to cos of 2 pi k by 3 plus i sine of 2 pi k by 3. And then we would just simply sub them in. And in this case, if we wanted these, if we were asked for these between negative, so we wanted these between negative and positive pi, we would take k equal to 0 and k equal to plus or minus 1. So if we take k equal to 0, we can say that z1 is going to be cos of 0 uh, plus i sine of 0, and that's going to give us now 1. If we take z2 and we will use positive 1, we're going to get cos of 2 pi by 3 plus i sine of 2 pi by 3, which we will see will give us now this. This is going to give us a root over here. Um, and that will give us that one just there. And that's going to be now we're going to have minus 1 half plus root 3 over 2i. And then finally, we would have the third one. And this time, we would take k equal to negative 1. You could take k equal to 2. That would throw us between 0 and 2 pi. Often, you'll be asked between um, negative and positive pi. So we'd end up with minus 2 pi by 3 plus i sine of negative 2 pi by 3. And that would now give us minus 1 half minus root 3 over 2i. So if you put in 4 pi by 3, you can get exactly the same. So that will give you, it will yield exactly the same answer. And what we'll end up with is the following. The roots will be 1. They will be now negative 1 half plus root 3 over 2i. And then we will have uh, negative 1 half and then minus root 3 over 2i. And quite clearly, if we add this up, we're going to get 1 minus half minus half, which is naught plus root 3 over 2 minus root 3 over 2i is going to give us plus 0i, and we can see that equals naught. As stated, though, with that, I personally think there's a, a lot quicker way of solving it, uh, and we'll just look at that now. But if you're asked to find the nth roots of unity, these are two approaches that you can take. Alternatively, I would like to say z cubed is equal to 1, z cubed is equal, uh, so z cubed minus 1 is equal to 0, and then factoring this and saying that this is going to be the difference of cubes, z minus 1 multiplied by z squared plus z plus 1 equals 0. So we know 1 is the solution, and all we need to do is solve this one. So if I completed the square, we'd have z plus 1 half, all squared, minus 1 quarter and then we still got the one so we could say plus four over four that would now leave me z plus one half all squared is equal to negative three over four taking the square root of both sides what we would see is that we would have z plus one half is equal to plus or minus if we take the square root of negative three over four we're going to get plus or minus root three over two i Remember, we're rooting a negative number. So we could say z is equal to minus 1 half, and then we'd have plus or minus root 3 over 2i. So to solve z cubed is equal to 1, I prefer that as an approach. But the whole reason that we focused on this is because if we need to go to the 6th power, you can see how that works. And my solutions here, you can see that those two are the conjugate pair of them. So hopefully that's a bit sort of off the top of my head. So apologies if there have been any slight um, slip ups in it, especially with this thing here. Uh, but hopefully you can see the idea. All we're doing, we're finding the first one. Then we are splitting now 2 pi radians by the number. And we're finding the additional roots by taking values of k. If we want it between 0 and 2 pi from uh, 0 to n minus 1, or if we want it now, we need uh, between negative and positive pi, we just need to adjust and have plus or minus values. And we've shown it with this one, but as stated, if you're asked to solve z cubed equals 1, I would prefer to go for this approach.